Zipper rolls out to the right, pitches off to Taylor, and Taylor's to the 20. Down to the 15, down to the 10, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Touchdown, Billy Taylor! Touchdown, Billy Taylor! Billy Taylor scored a touchdown from 21 yards out. The crowd goes berserk. It was November 22nd, 1969 that they came to Barry, Michigan, all dressed in maize and blue. The words were said, the prayers were read, and everybody cried. But when they closed the coffin, there was someone else inside. Oh, they came to Barry, Michigan, but Michigan wasn't dead. And when the game was over, it was someone else instead. Eleven Michigan Wolverines put on the gloves of gray, and as the organ played the victors, they laid Woody Hayes away. Under center is Wangler at the 45. He goes back. He's looking for a receiver. He throws downfield to fire. Who's got it better than us? Nobody! Welcome to the Michigan Man Podcast on Wolverine Sports Radio, a member of the V-Sporto Network and in partnership with SB Nation's Maze and Brew for Wolverine fans from coast to coast. Go Blue, and welcome to the Visitor's Edition for this week. I'm your host, Mike Fitzpatrick. Joining us in just a minute will be the longtime radio play-by-play voice of Middle Tennessee State football, Chip Walters. First, my view from Section 17 to get us going today. We're just two days away from the opener now, and I can't wait to tee it up and get this thing started. As Nick Baumgartner said on Tuesday's show, these guys, Middle Tennessee State, aren't your usual chump opener, and those were his words. They are a decent football team. That said, I think we have to roll these guys up in the opener. I mean, we can't get crazy if we have some hiccups on both sides of the ball. I am anxious, though, to see what the offense looks like. Part of me thinks we'll have a vanilla game plan so we don't show much, but the other part of me would like to see us go out there and open it up from the get-go. If you listen to this show on a regular basis, even during basketball season, it feels like we spend a lot of time previewing the upcoming football season. You just get to a point in June and July where you're tired of speculation and talking about if we do this, if we do that, if this happens, if that happens, etc., etc. I think you know what I mean. We're ready to get it going and have something concrete to talk about. So hang in there, gang. We only have a few more days to wait. Middle Tennessee State is a Conference USA team. We are bigger and faster than they are and have more talent than they do at every position group. On paper, this looks like the kind of game that could get out of hand early, and I hope it does. But it's the opener, and crazy things can happen in the first game of the year. We've seen that before. I apologize in advance for the audio quality of the interview. Chip was using his cell phone, and I think he had me on speaker, so his volume is a little bit low. Up next is Chip Walters a long-time radio play-by-play voice of Middle Tennessee State football. You're on the Michigan Man, in partnership with our friends at SB Nation's Maize and Brew. Here with us on our visitor segment as we get ready for the big opener on Saturday evening is the longtime radio play-by-play voice of Middle Tennessee State football and basketball, Chip Walters. Chip, great to have you with us. Hey, appreciate the time today. Well, Chip, it's the first ever meeting between Michigan and the Blue Raiders. It's in the big house. It's the opener. A big TV audience with a 7.30 p.m. kickoff. A big opportunity for a Coach Brick Stocktill's uh, team, isn't it? Well, it is, and, uh, you know, and we're the only team in Conference USA this year that's playing. You know, we're part of the group of five, I guess, in Conference USA, and and uh, we're the only team this year playing three power fives. We go to Iowa in, in four weeks uh, and also have Duke at home this year. So, uh, But Michigan is, I mean, it's, it's one of those special places in college football, and, and uh, you know, I, I'm sure, you know, I probably – 
soak in the history part a little more than, you know, probably the 18 to 22 year olds that'll be on the field, they will appreciate this, this opportunity and this trip a little more as time goes on. Right now they're, they're more locked in on, on Shea Patterson and True Wilson and, you know, things like that. But, uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm looking forward to, to, uh, being there, uh, experiencing Michigan Stadium, uh, you know, being able to get around on campus on Saturday morning, things like that. I mean, I'm, I was trying to think when the last time that Michigan and Middle played in anything, and I know we played in basketball in Birmingham back in the late 80s, and yeah. and uh, Middle actually got the win in that game uh, at, at, a, at a tournament hosted by UAB. Uh, so, you know, I, I guess, you know we're, we're trying to see if there's some old lightning in a bottle somewhere, I guess, coming to, coming to Ann Arbor this weekend. <laughs> Uh, is the fan base uh, pretty excited? I know it's Labor Day weekend. That might sort of uh, put a, a crimp in some of the travel plans for a lot of folks. But overall, you think it's a, a pretty good crowd that uh, Middle Tennessee State's going to bring? Well, I, I think, you know, I, I, you know, Middle fans like to go to, the, you know, new places as well. I'm not sure what the ticket allotment was for this game. But, you know, I, I've, I've actually, uh, you know, just kind of running into people at, really kind of some people I didn't expect to make the trip. I'm hearing them say, yeah, we're going. And, you know, it's, it's not a, you know, you can, from Nashville, you, it's pretty easy flights to Detroit and, and pretty, uh, you know, pretty cost effective to go. And, 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 and uh, we've had a, a really, really hot summer here. And, and, uh, you know, I'm not sure that, that one more weekend at the lake or, you know, it's something, you know, when they can, look and say, oh, it's going to be 71 on Saturday. That, that's kind of appealing after the hot weather that we've had this year. We, I think we've had set a record for days over 95 this year. But, uh, you know, I, I had to start going through the closet looking for, okay, now where's that long sleeve uh, Blue Raider <laughs> Network shirt that i got to wear? I'm going to put it in the bag for this weekend. Bottom line, I think, yeah, I think we're going to have a pretty good, pretty good crowd up there. And, uh, you know, we, we play, you know, every year we play at least a couple of these type games. And and we and it gives our fans an opportunity to go and and see some you know really fun places and some good destinations. Well, Chip, most Michigan fans don't know a whole lot about Middle Tennessee State football. Uh, they do know the Blue Raiders play in Conference USA and are coming off a very good year, aren't they? Well, you know, we had had, a, had another bowl year, and that's you know I think if you uh, wanted to say how, how could you best describe Rich Stockwell's tenure at Middle and it would be consistency would be the word because we've been in bowl games four out of the last five years. Um, it, and we've had uh, plenty of, you know, uh, we're in a conference championship game a, a year ago. You know, we have been in that, you know, uh, because of the schedule we play, it, it's hard for anybody in our league to have that 10 win season, 12 win season, because you are, typically playing up uh, at least once, maybe twice, in our case, three times this year. And our league is, is very competitive. When you look at ourselves, Marshall, uh, Lane Kiffin has brought FAU up. North Texas is going to be really good this year. Louisiana Tech uh, has, has been very consistent and very good. They play at Texas this weekend. Southern Miss has made their way back. UAB was the story of college football a couple of years ago when they, you know, brought their program back after, after shuttering it. So, you know, it's for us to have done what we've done and, and get to that seven, eight win mark on a consistent basis, get in bowl games. Uh, and that, that's, you know, that's one of the goals every year. And, and, you know, and it's, uh, that, that has been, you know, really the, the thing if you could, you know, describe what Rick Stockstill's program is about. It's been about consistency and competitiveness. Well, Coach Stockstill's been head coach for 14 years now. The record overall, 87 and 78. As you said, very consistent. That is a long tenure these days in college football, so the powers that be down there must be very happy with the job he's doing. Well, you know, what he did when he came in is he inherited uh, a, a situation I mean, we were we were competitive. Andy McCollum had had taken the program into uh, at that time one A status from Division One AA. Middle was a one AA power for years. Middle, Eastern Kentucky, Georgia Southern, Marshall, where they were in in that that group of, that was always good. 
in 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 one double A football. Um, and 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 Andy, uh, uh, you know, took did a great job sitting the middle into the one A era. Um, there might there were some shortcomings on the on the academic side that uh, that uh, when they when the APR rankings came out, the uh, folks were not necessarily that happy about it. Well, Coach Stock came in, got that turned around, and and within two years had the APR ranking in football back. To where it was in the top ten in, in the country. Uh, I mean, up with the Dukes, Northwesterns, Michigan, Vanderbilt, Florida, uh, that, that all have the, the, the really good APR numbers in football. Um, and so, and, and you know, and he did that, and he brought that level of consistency. Uh, they, they, you know, fundamentally, typically, are very sound. This team, his teams, are built. As we go into this weekend, this team is not built to play Michigan's every week. This team is built to play a Conference USA schedule, which is more of a spread, speed type game. That's the the downside of playing the, the Michigan's and Iowa's in particular are how those teams are built. Although Michigan has a ton of speed, they've got just unbelievable size, in particular up front and. And, and that's where you, you, you that's where you get into some mismatch situations, and you have to try to you know figure out okay how can we you know you know how can we coach and team our way uh, around that what what is the how do you solve that that problem right there now Duke on the other hand they come in in the third week Duke and Middles teams are built personnel wise in similar fashion because the ACC is more of a a speed league. Yeah, they got plenty of size, but not like what you see out of the Big Ten. So, uh, you know, Rick has built his team uh, from day one on speed, quickness, uh, and, and, and playing, you know, playing a, they'll play tempo sometimes, and that, that, that has been, you know, that's been what he's been all about. Well, Chip, let's talk about the Blue Raider offense and what we're going to see on Saturday evening in the Big House. Uh, last year, Coach Rick uh, Stockstill's son was the quarterback, and he had a, a great career under center there, record-setting career, but he, he graduated. Who are we going to see taking snaps uh, under center on Saturday? Well, since Michigan does not put out a two-deep, Middle Tennessee is not putting out a two-deep this <laughs> week. So, uh, and so uh, it, it, he has, it has been a three-horse race, basically, uh, uh, this fall, it has been uh, two guys who have had some experience as being a backup, that being Asher O'Hara and Chase Cunningham. Chase uh, has played in some, played in about four games in some mop-up duty uh, a year ago, and and Asher O'Hara actually last year Brent uh, got hurt on the first play of the game at FIU, and O'Hara came in and and played the rest of the game. Middle lost a a four-point game uh, in, in, uh, in Miami in, in that ball game, and, and but he was throwing into the end zone on the last play of the game to potentially get the win. So O'Hara, very competitive, uh, and, and Coach Stockstill has not gone to the point of naming a starter, but he has uh, hinted around a little bit, and the last word, well, when we did his coaches show on Monday, uh, his, his words were that he felt like Asher may be the most ready to jump in there. Well, the third guy is the is kind of the X factor, and the one, he's the guy that that, that middle fans are, are, are kind of waiting to see what he can do, and his name's Randall Johnson. He is a, a junior college transfer from California, and he is, uh, he is 6'4", 6'5", 230, uh, you know, big, big arm, can run it. Well, he's got that big arm, but sometimes he's not sure exactly where it's going to land. And and so the thing is, he did not – he had to go to school through May. So he didn't get to come at Christmas break, and which would have been great for him to have gone through spring ball. But he, he, had, he, was, in, he was in school in California, got here in late June, and – and so he's been playing catch-up, not from a necessarily a physical standpoint, but 
to absorb Tony Franklin's offensive system and to get up to speed there. So he's a little behind. You know, he does have some physical tools that can help him make up some ground. Will we see him this week? I, you know, I just I really don't know. We we very well could just to get his feet wet, um, but uh, maybe not. Uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm pretty sure we'll see Asher and Chase in the game on Saturday at quarterback. Uh, who will be out there? You know, on the first offensive play, mm-hmm. I'm not quite sure. But if I had to bet, I would probably guess that it was going to be Asher O'Hara. Well, as far as uh, the running back situation, Shaton Mobley had a, a very nice year at running back last season. Picked up 660 yards, four TDs. Is he going to be the starter on Saturday? Well, you know, I, it's going to be interesting because it's hard for um, in, in our situation. It's more personnel groupings, and, and you know, a, a I'm trying to think. The last time we went with a one tailback was probably, gosh. Eight years ago when Benny Cunningham was here, mm-hmm. and Benny went on and played for the Rams and the Bears and still playing, and uh, and he was a great back. And, you know, but in, in, in our situation, it's more of a um, – he has two backs. You've got Shaton Mobley and, and Terrell West. Uh, and, and really, it's, it's almost – with those two guys, it's a down-and-distance type situation of who's going to be in there. Um, uh, West is he is the more lean, uh, quick back, mobbly, good short yardage guy. He's got some bulk about him. And then you've got there's a third guy who you may see different spots on the field named Brad Anderson. Go to the GoBlueRaiders.com website. There's a great story about his return from uh, a season-ending. Uh, ankle dislocation a year ago and, and what his rehab has been about. But Brad is one of those guys who's just a playmaker, and sometimes he, he's like a – I think about a Dave Maggot kind of guy, you mm-hmm. know, uh, third down back, really good catching the football, uh, also gets to the edge, uh, that kind of thing. So he would be kind of the third guy. They may You may see him in the slot. You may see him at running back, just depending on – up the down and distance is, but but West and Mobley, uh, again, they're, they're kind of the, I like to call them the thunder and lightning, uh, Mobley being the thunder and, and West being the lightning, because he, he, he can be as quick as lightning sometimes when he when he finds a crew. Well, Chip, who are some of the, uh, the other names on the offensive side that Michigan fans can keep an eye out for on Saturday that are key contributors, or, or could be? Well, uh, on the offensive side, you know, we've... Uh, a guy named Ty Lee, number eight. He is a, a small wide receiver. He's got over 200 uh, career catches. Um, NFL fans probably know the know who Richie James is. He played at Middle and started his first game uh, for the San Francisco 49ers last year and uh, made the roster and 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 you know he kind of became their kickoff return specialist and all that. Well, Richie. Uh, was, uh, you know, uh, he was a, a, a highlight receiver at middle. Lee is uh, one of those guys. He, he has kind of fallen right into the footsteps of, of James. Uh, and, and he, um, you know, he is kind of, he is a go-to, you know, kind of always make the catch kind of guy. Um, so you, you've got him, you've got uh, C.J. Wyndham. Uh, Isaiah Upton, Jimmy Williams is a is a big target who they have high expectations of, of making um, making a good jump from his sophomore to junior year. Along the offensive line, it's it's uh, it's it's going to be almost a completely retooled offensive line as far as starters are concerned. You're going to have uh, at least four of your guys uh, have played a good bit a year ago. As in backups, and you know, as they roll those offensive linemen in and out. But the guys who were listed as starters a year ago, you, you had three lost to graduation. You had a couple of them mixed up in fall camp, so uh, they're going to they'll probably play as well. But but uh, you're going to have uh, it, it's a they're very happy with their offensive line group. Their athletic can run, so it's uh, you know there, there's some question marks there, and uh, you know the uh, probably the reason. Uh, the offensive line doesn't 
coach didn't sleep too well this week is when you're going up against Michigan's defensive front with uh, some new offensive linemen. That makes you a little bit uneasy. Here it is on our visitor segment this week is the radio play-by-play voice of Middle Tennessee State football and basketball, Chip Walters. A chip over on defense, five starters back, most notably uh, free safety, uh, Reed Blankenship, strong safety, Javante Moffitt. A uh, 50-year senior linebacker, Khalil Brooks, leads a solid group back there. But there are a lot of new faces on this defense, too, aren't there? There are, and uh, and, and I'll tell you, and, and, and I, am, I am still learning them uh, <laughs> at this point. Uh, they are, uh, and, and, and that's why we've got another couple of, uh, of study days. But, but, you know, they have recruited well. Scott Schaefer is the defensive coordinator, mm-hmm. and Scott was a longtime uh D.C. at Syracuse and was the head coach at Syracuse uh, when Doug Marone left to go to the NFL and um, and was the head coach there for three years, came to the middle uh, when that tenure ended uh, and has done nothing but incredible things and seen really great improvement in the in the defense each year under under Schaefer. And, and boy, you look at a Reed Blankenship and, and, and Reed, uh, you know, he, he's one of those kids who just soaks up everything he, he can he can get from from coaching. And you know, his freshman year uh, was Coach Schaefer's first year here, so they've kind of been you know married at the hip since you know they both got here at the same time. And Reed back there, he's moving positions from strong safety to free this year. Javante Moffitt played four games a year ago. Uh, and then was redshirted under the new redshirt rule, so he's back for his fifth year and uh, and is ready to play. Javante is just a, a great I, I, I watched him. Uh, I actually called a couple of his high school games when his high school team played in the in the uh, Class A state championships here, uh, doing those games on television. And and Javante was MVP of the Blue Cross Bowl, which is our state championship games. You know, twice uh, for Union City. So he's 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 got fall skills, great instincts. Um, you know, in, in that linebacking core, who's going to fill the middle linebacking spot is a question. It'll be somebody new because Darius Harris, who's a, a longtime starter for middle, graduated. Uh, Khalil Brooks, uh, as you mentioned, when folks see him, they'll say that's a linebacker. <laughs> but I mean, he is un- he's undersized, but man, he is fast. And and the way they play him on the edge, he tries to get angles. You know, he's uh, he is very close to becoming the all-time sack leader at middle. Uh, and you know, and, and with his size, you think, I mean, that's hard to believe because the guy he's chasing in that category is is a guy named Eric Walden, who was a prototypical. Uh, NFL defensive end and played a long time for the Colts and Titans and, and other folks. So, you know, for Khalil, he is a he's kind of a hybrid guy, defensive end, outside linebacker in this system. Uh, they they all it's kind of it looks like an amoeba out there a little bit when they get lined up, but they all just try to get angles. Is what it's all about. Well, Chip, as you mentioned, very tough schedule for the Blue Raiders, especially with a young team that's a rebuilding. Uh, we know it's Michigan on the road to open on Saturday, then in week three, Duke down at your place, and then on the road to Iowa. And I don't know if uh, Middle Tennessee State has ever played Iowa before, but Kinnick Stadium is a crazy place to play a game. This is really a big challenge, the first three out of four weeks for a young team, isn't it? It really is. I mean, that schedule would be challenging for anybody. Yeah. And uh, and, uh, in, in the fourth game, you know, you cannot go to sleep on, on who our, our – September 7th opponent is, and that's Tennessee State. So that that's, uh, they're right down the road in Nashville, and 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 they, you know, we, we used to be in the same league, and and when we were when Middle was one double A, so they'll come in with a little chip on their shoulder, and and and, and you know, kind of a backyard rivalry. You know, so many of our kids went to high school with the TSU kids, mm-hmm. and and, uh, and 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 our students, uh, because we we. We both draw so many students from, uh, you know, within a hundred miles of Nashville. That that uh, there's that that's always a, a whenever we play, it's a huge game, you know, from attendance because everybody wants a little bragging rights in there. But but you're right with Michigan, uh, Duke, uh, Iowa, and we have not 
played Iowa before in football. So it, it is a you know you could have a really really good football team and be one and three when the end of September comes. And and then we open up we go into conference play uh, against the, our first two games in Conference USA uh, are against Marshall at home. Marshall picked to win our division this year. And then the next game, October 12th, at Florida Atlantic, where, you know, they expect to bounce back there this year. They won two games in 20 or 10 games in 2017. And, by the way, Brett Stockwell, our former quarterback, is now an assistant coach at FAU. And then on October 19th, you go to North Texas, who's picked to win the West. So, you know, Middle's first seven games are, you know, there's, there's – there's barely a chance to catch your breath in there. After they navigate the tough non-conference slate, are they now at a, uh, a talent level in the program that they're going to be able to compete with and, and maybe have a chance to duplicate that 7-1 and one conference record again this year? The thing is that I look at this football team and, and, and you, know, look at, you know, look at personnel and, and it's like, you know, how, you know, if you can, my take is, if you can get some quarterback play that doesn't hurt you, mm-hmm. that this team is pretty deep uh, el- elsewhere, what, both at running back, receiver, you know, the line, and on defense, it should be Scott Schaefer's best defense in three years and the best defense here in probably seven or eight years. So you feel pretty good about that side of the ball if they can stay healthy. And, you know, the whole linchpin of the whole thing is what kind of quarterback player you're going to get. And right now, we just don't know. Well, looking ahead to the opener, I know as far as uh, injury reports, we don't get that much uh, up here on on Michigan. Not much at all. We know who that we have Andrew Stuber, one of our tackles, is out for the season. But as far as minor injuries or nagging injuries, we have no idea. So I don't know what uh, Coach Stock still does, but is the team in pretty good shape for Saturday? Well, you know, typically he's a little more open about it, but uh, just, you know, What's good for the goose is good for the gander. He's being <laughs> tight-lipped about all that this week, too. So, uh, you know, my, my typical question, if I was going to say, okay, where do we normally get a, a, a minor injury or two at this mm-hmm. time of year, and that would be, you know, you know how healthy is the big – it seems like always the big question is how healthy are you up front? And – on the offensive and defensive lines, and uh, you know, you you, uh, you had a, uh, you have a guy named Josh Fannin who has been the starting center the last couple of years, and you know, you know, he's an important guy that you can't, you don't want him to get mixed up because he, the way this offense runs, the center makes a lot of the calls when they come to the line. So you you want if you've got a new quarterback back there, which we will. You'd like to have an experienced guy getting him the ball and making sure that it's on the spot every time when we run so much out of the shotgun. So, uh, you know, that, that's I, I have not heard of any anything major uh, that it's been a, a pretty clean fall camp. But again, like I said this week, uh, you know, we'll we'll get a, a much clearer picture about 7:30. Or probably maybe a little before that, about 6.30 Saturday night when they come out for warm-ups and see who's got pads on and see who's in street clothes. Well, as you mentioned at the top of the interview, you're going to have to dig out some of your long sleeve shirts, and I think that's true. After a long, uh, hot camp, uh, I know it was very warm up here in August, and I know it's a lot warmer down there uh, during camp. But the temps are supposed to uh, start out in the 60s, be down in the 50s. So I think both teams are going to love that weather Saturday night. I think so. I mean, I think it will energize both teams because, you know, you, you have been just beating on each other on your team, on your own teammates for four weeks mm-hmm. now and, and, and gone through that. And, and you know, and, and, and all over the country, you know, there's so much. Everybody does such a great job now as far as, you know, hydration, uh, making sure, you know, taking care of the bodies of the players uh, much more than back in our era when, you know, it, you know, it was a sign of weakness if you wanted to get a sip of water, you know, that kind of thing. But, but uh, kind of the Junction Boys uh, deal. But, uh, you know, I, I think, you know, when, when, they, when they pop out there and it's, you know, 67 degrees or whatever, you know, uh, when they get there for warm-ups, then 
and drop it into the 50s. I, 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 to me, it, I mean, it's going to energize me. I can, you know, I can tell you that already. So I think it will for them as well. And, and, and uh, our guys, you know, they're not unfamiliar with going into tough atmospheres to play. Uh, I mean, the, uh, you know, there's going to be 110,000 people plus there, and, and uh, not one of them is going to get on the field to play. So, that's the that's the that's the that's the message that the coach always hands out. He goes, just worry about those 22 on the other side and uh, and, and go from there. And, and Michigan's are quite quite good enough, and that's plenty to worry about. So uh, you know, I hope our guys get to you know enjoy it a little bit. Uh, I know me and my guys, we're actually coming over to campus. Uh, my radio crew, we're coming over early. Uh, you know, since it is a night game and. And have an opportunity to, to uh, look around campus a little bit and, and kind of soak some of that in because uh, you know I, I enjoy I like to make the most out of these trips. We're going to the Tigers game on Friday night, and so looking forward to that. And uh, and then uh, then a little football on, on Saturday. Our guest today has been the longtime radio play-by-play voice of Middle Tennessee State football and basketball, Chip Walters. It sounds like your schedule is packed <laughs> for the trip up here, uh, Chip, so enjoy, and we thank you for taking the time, so being very generous with your time this morning. All right, appreciate it, guys. We'll uh, talk to you and look forward to seeing you on Saturday. Quick Hits is next as we wrap it up for another week here on The Michigan Man and in partnership with SB Nation's Maze and Brew. On Quick Hits today, nothing new on the injury front to discuss. So here are some game day facts for you. This is the first meeting between these two teams. Coach Rick Stock still is in his 14th year at Middle Tennessee State and has a record of 87 and 78. Last year they were 8 and 6 overall, 7 and 1 in the East Division of Conference USA. They have 11 returning starters, 4 on offense, 6 on D, and 1 specialist. They played in last year's New Orleans Bowl and lost 45-13 to to Appalachian State. Now, the weatherman says it's going to be overcast most of the day on Saturday with a high in the low 70s. Temps at kickoff, though, should be in the low 60s and dropping into the upper 50s during the game. Sort of perfect weather for a game in late August. Now, the weatherman is saying there is a 40% chance of showers late in the evening, so hopefully... We get the game over with before any kind of rain comes in. At any rate, that will do it for our visitor's edition this week for the home opener with Middle Tennessee State. Whether you're watching on BTN or are in the big house, enjoy the day. We have waited a long time for this. I'm your host, Mike Fitzpatrick. Have a great Wolverine weekend, everyone. Think victory. Beat Middle Tennessee State. I'll see you back here next week. On Tuesday, my scheduled guest is the angel of the big house. Detroit News beat writer Angelique Shingelis. We'll recap the opener and look ahead to next week's game. On Thursday, we'll be joined by the radio play-by-play voice of Army football, Rich DeMarco. So until we meet again, take care, and as always, Go Blue! Thanks for joining us today on The Michigan Man, here on Wolverine Sports Radio, a member of the V-Sporto Network and in partnership with SB Nation's Maze and Brew. Our listener lines are open 24-7 for your calls at 313-263-4842. That's 313-263-4842. Or email us at the Michigan Man Podcast at yahoo.com. That's the Michigan Man Podcast at yahoo.com. The Michigan Man Podcast is produced at the studios of Robin Lynn Productions, Allen Park, Michigan, and is not affiliated with the University of Michigan. Go Blue!